Hello. Uh, I want to start my speech uh, with a rap that I wrote in uh, when I started graffiti. It's about how I started graffiti and how do I go and do it. So it goes like, I hide myself under cover till the guards pass. There's no turning back. Keep calm and relax. The night gets dark as you're feeling unsafe. How would people know you if you don't write your name? The name that can take you to the darker side of life. Painting on the walls, once upon a time, I saw, I followed, they saw, they followed, they made me run so fast. I've been spoken blunt, but the fun doesn't last. Haters keep on hating, but the love stays constant. People do respect when I'm out in an outrun. Never been a punk, never scared of the bullies. Shoot your finger up and say, love the police. While I pick up the cans and I'm bombing them. Spending a couple of days on the street, I ain't stopping. And I realize the fact that I always think a lot. But if I miss this, I'ma miss the last shot. See, this is the life of a writer, a violent criminal in the eyes of the cider. Survive the life with a few ups and downs, punch dress like a fighter, straight to the ground. A graffiti artist calls himself a writer because we write on the wall. We write our names not to boost our egos, but just to communicate with other graffiti artists that are present in the scene. It's like an underground network of graffiti artists. Living in the city of Bombay, I always saw the city in shades of grey. And in between this chaotic composition, I used to see a little bit of colours. These colours came from the posters or the banners or little Bollywood paintings that were there to promote, the, to promote their uh, scene. So, I was really like attracted towards these uh, little posters that try to sell you stuff. Uh, they had a little bit of freedom and uh, this freedom came from the content that they wanted to share. It was kind of obscene and strange, but also uh, a, a little rebellious act. So in this, it, as it is a city of dreams, everyone comes here and get settled down. And there are a lot of small settlements. And I come from one of these settlements called slums. And in the slums, we have a small house we, I, where I used to live before. It was a, a 10 by 10 feet block placed over each other like a matchbox. And there were two rooms, one on the top and one at the bottom. So um, life was hard in the slums, but never boring. Uh, we had really thin walls and I could hear mental abuse, uh, arguments, and all sorts of things, which was a very, which was kind of a distraction. There was a community toilet in our, uh, in our slum that everyone used to share. That was the first place where I saw my first writing on the wall. People writing messages, uh, writing phone numbers, or a lot of random drawings. It didn't really influence me to do anything as such, but it was there. That was the place I used to hate the most, because imagine uh, going in the morning and waiting for your turn just to loosen up. It was a strange feeling. So um, I was living with, with it for like 18 years of my life. After a few years, uh, in 2006, the floods uh, of uh, the flood struck Bombay and uh, it was hard for us to communicate or we would stand for three days on the top uh, of our house. The bottom room was filled with at least, uh, which was 10 feet in height, was completely filled with water. So there is no connection to the outer world. I wasn't able to talk to anyone. We had no food and I was stranded with my grandparents. I used to live with my grandparents. So, I found some old drawing books of mine and I get, went through it. That's the first time I realized that I could do drawing. The first time when I did drawing in school was uh, in my fifth standard and the first page was my art book. So my definition of art was only drawing and nothing else. I didn't know what it really consists of. So after when I started, I drew for three days continuously in the floods. That was my way to just went out. Uh, in, in that period of time, I had two privileges. One was 
my dad sent me to a convent school, which I'm really thankful for. And the second was that uh, because of the convent school, I could watch my cable TV, which was the second privilege. And because of that, I got introduced to hip hop. And hip hop, when it came into my life, I realized that I could speak or talk without having anyone to judge me or tell me anything. So, okay, I do graffiti for a living. Graffiti is a form of art that I do, like painting on walls. So I paint walls for a living. Later I knew that graffiti was, a, was an element of hip hop and it was all connected together. After living all, through all these hardships, uh, I came to a point uh, where carrying the weight of my father's dream, <laughs> I wanted to be an engineer. So I got myself into a science uh, college and I got 47 percentage in the 10th and I got, sorry, 74 in the 10th and I got 47 in my 12th standard. It was, <laughs> it was almost like my parents lost hope and they were like, it, like nothing will happen, you know, kuch nahi hoga. After, through the struggle, I met a person on the street and because uh, back in 2006 when I, the flood struck, I knew I could draw. So I started to talk to him and he told me about his uh, course about drawing and how can you apply drawing in something that you really love to do or like in, some, in selling something, basically commercial art. And I thought this is a good idea, so why don't I join commercial art? So I got myself enrolled, like convinced my dad and I got myself enrolled in an art college. So. I used to see all these rap videos, the hip hop videos where people used to talk their heart out and I saw like graffiti in the background so I was like I can't rap but I can I can really do the thing that is behind, the artwork that's behind. So I tried to research about it and we researched everything about it. I knew everything what graffiti consists of, even what they use. So come to the place where I used to hate the most, the, the public toilet that I used to visit for 15 years of my life. I met, uh, there were these two German guys painting graffiti on the same public toilet. So my friend called me up and he's like, hey bro, there are some guys painting on uh, the public toilet, why don't you come and check out? So I went there and I asked them two questions that really changed my life for me. The first one was, are you a graffiti artist? Without being interested, they didn't even look behind because it's a common question. Of course, I'm doing graffiti, why would you ask that? The second question I asked, are you using Montana cans? So Montana is a very famous brand that uh, graffiti artists use in their artwork. So he turned around, looked surprisingly at me, thinking that how would a, a normal boy in a slum know about these spray cans? Which, were, which wasn't completely normal to anyone. So I said, yes, kind of. I am going to be a graffiti artist. So he said, okay, you know what? Fine, I'll give you some cans. He, he gave me uh, some spray cans and they left back to their country. Me being like, this is treasure for me. Uh, I was so happy. I was like, okay, fine. I came back home and uh, I started spraying everywhere around the city. So I did these tags around the city where I wrote my name and everyone started seeing my name and uh, all other foreign artists started to connect with me and uh, in December these guys came back with a bunch of other artists who were a part of an exchange project. So in this exchange project, I when they, these artists came here, I learned a lot about the skills. I saw them like painting like uh, different styles and it was a, a clear insight into the graffiti scene for me. After uh, a few months later, like so I, at this point of time I was also doing commercial work because I was one of the pioneers of the Indian graffiti scene that started here. I had no one to look upon so YouTube or TV was my first teacher. I used to pause videos and check like how people do things. and. Uh, yeah, so after uh, six months in August of uh, 2013, they invited me for a graffiti festival in Germany. So from the slum and the toilet I used to hate the most, from that same place, I went to Germany for on a full expense paid trip 
for 20 days in an exchange project. As soon as I reached there, I was so happy. The moment when I used to think that I was born in the wrong place. Every time I used to be like, I am in the wrong place. Like, why has God put me in this place? And it's the first time I thought that I am in the right place. I was in Germany and I saw these subcultures, how they unite all the races together, how they bring people together. Because they don't have a culture, you have to understand. Because in India, we have a culture. We have traditions. We have caste religions that, you know, bring people together. But they have these subcultures that bring people together. And all the youth are doing their own thing, you know. So graffiti, uh, hip hop consists of four, five elements, rap, uh, b-boying, graffiti, DJ, and the fifth is knowledge. Knowledge about what is going on around you. And that's what they talk about, or that's what they paint about, or say things about, play songs about. So when I came back with all this knowledge, I thought it is not, should be kept to me, you know, because it deserves to go around. It deserves to go to everyone. So I started taking uh, workshops, judging college events, making the most out of it. After making all these connections and um, my dad being proud of me, seeing my name in magazines, my interviews on televisions, and uh, there was even a newspaper article that went to my village. So then my village people called me and said, you know, like you're doing good. And we didn't know what you were doing, you know, like we thought you were lost. Uh, but my father was really proud of me. My grandparents were proud of me. After all those years uh, and the connections I made throughout, all, like the whole world kind of knows me now because of the scene. I got invited to uh, Brazil to be the first Indian guy to represent India in the graffiti scene in Brazil in an international festival. So it was the first time when India, the flag of India was there on an gra international graffiti festival. I was really proud of myself. And again, for the second time, I went uh, with my crew and it, it gave me a, a real insight. And that was kind of the reward that I think I deserve. So I would like to say one thing that the universe tries to manifest everything like it 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 brings together everything when you try when you make your efforts you don't have to worry about me failing or you don't have to worry about what people will say you just have to keep doing your own thing you just have to focus on the right thing and the universe will bring align itself to make that thing happen for you so just keep doing your thing and if you ever feel that you're in the wrong place then say that i'm not i'm in the right place and i will prove myself thank you so much